In this video, I'm addressing the spike in coronavirus cases currently in Trinidad and Tobago. Real woman don't mean that your hair do. Pretty nails and shoes don't mean you have to trim my way I spend. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Makisha. If it's your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell so you get all the alerts so when I upload new videos. So my channel has a lot of carnival, natural hair, um, lifestyle vlogs, a lot of content on my channel. Join the family. Let's jump right into this video. So today's date, just to timestamp this, because I don't know if stuff is going to change. It's um, July 29th. 2020. So the last time I addressed coronavirus in Trinidad, I was talking about whether or not carnival is going to be happening local only for 2021. And one of the stipulations for that to happen was low coronavirus cases in Trinidad and Tobago. So Trinidad had about 80 days roughly where there was no local cases. There were imported cases of people flying in and quarantining but there weren't any like local cases in Trinidad and Tobago. So everything is my opinion in this video. Do not come for your girl, okay? So I think the reason why everybody got so relaxed while well, most people, the population, kind of had the mindset to be relaxed is because there wasn't any cases locally for over 80 days, roughly. So people stopped wearing their masks, social distancing and things like that in Trinidad. So this week in Trinidad, there's been cases of a spread. A lot of businesses were temporarily closed for cleaning, a police station, a bank, um, I think it was two banks, um, Pennywise, which is like a drugstore, um, the school that the child was at. So it's really alarming. Every time you hear it, you're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Um, I'm going to play a recording right now. A lot of things came to light when a child from a school tested positive. It's um, a voice note. So for this footage, I want to credit Danny L. Style on YouTube. I'm using her footage. So here we go. The lady, the mature lady who got, who has the COVID and was at Peter Samuel's place, um, swimming pool, workout, whatever it's called. She's she lives in the house next to young's pharmacy where everybody in that house has covid they got that from the, his son her son drives the spanish around and that's how he contacted it that's that's what i've been told um so he got it and now they're looking for him because he's gone into hiding why he's being silly i mean just come out and let him help your dumb ass get better you know but she's from that house my sister's common-law her mother goes there to swim too and she's under lockdown now too because she's very friendly with the lady so her and her son and his son wife and their children are all under lockdown in one house plus a number of other people who swim there as well because there's a lot of older ladies that go there you know so that's the update the child that you've heard a child going to school to the C classes now for C exams um, that child lives in that house too so that child went to school and took it to school so it's a whole massive spread from that one household and that's that's not my opinion that's this lady's um, account of what she knows from being in Trinidad or what she's heard so if that is true and apparently I know recently in Trinidad last week there's been a number of occurrences where illegal immigration if you guys don't know, Venezuela is only about seven miles from Trinidad. It's known, and it's been years, that um, people have come across the waters illegally. But right now, the borders are shut down for air traffic and it's being controlled. But the water isn't that secure, apparent, apparently, with what happened last week. I believe it was over like 200 people that venezuelans that were apprehended and tested and things like that for coronavirus but they were coming in illegally um of course they have to have help from trinidad side the government needs to step up their game where the water situation is concerned between venezuela and trinidad i know it's not an easy task i will never say it's easy i know it's not easy but i feel like more effort needs to be put into that and also on land maybe you can use the soldiers and the police force to go around and actually 
um try to um maybe set up roadblocks or whatever spot check cars vans buses i don't know what's being used i also have another video it's just basically a shot i don't see the person that's talking i'm going to insert it here so let's just watch it but just a little background i don't see who is talking but it seems to be a coast guard official that is speaking on this video so here's the video so i'm gonna go around and show you guys let's go around this way we'll go around oh, any direction you want to go in i want to show you all what is really going on with these fishing boats this is a local fishing boat here and the question is i'm asking how do we have so much of these venezuelan boats spanish boats are we checking we check in one here, we check in two over there, we check in three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try to go around it, to go around and see how these boats, how do we have all these boats here packed up? of these boats so the question is why are all these boats here in our waters that's the question am i like and i want to find out okay it's national fisheries how are they allowed to come in while the borders are closed they bear a flag these are all the boats here and you can pay attention And this is the question here. There are people on these vessels, they are fishing vessels. The question is, why are they allowed? Look at the amount of people here on these boats. Come out here. I'll also leave the link to the videos in my description bar so you guys can check it out yourself. It appears to me that this man is a Coast Guard official and there are five boats in the water and they're being checked and searched and they're in Trinidad and Tobago waters. There's so many people on those boats, you don't know their status as far as coronavirus. We all know how contagious coronavirus is. You just It just takes one person in a community, in a household, in a school, and you know, that um, stronghold that you had over the virus and the cases. I think Trinidad, for Trinidad to have held off for so long with community spread even though they're not using the word the term community spread is what it is is community spreading um i think it's remarkable that for so long trinidad and tobago has been able to keep these numbers so low 80 days that's a lot that's a long time um my hat hats off to them for that effort but now i need to see what's going to be done within trinidad and tobago to secure and rein the population back in and those that get infected what treatment methods are going to be used do they have enough ppe things like that because in my opinion the whole point of like shutting down your borders shutting down your state your city is to buy that that government time to put things in place so hopefully and i have hope i have to have hope that that stuff is in place because i have a lot of family members in trinidad and tobago it's right now it's um there's campaigning going on because they're going to have election, I believe, on August 10th. So there's a lot of campaigning going on. I've seen the police commissioner shut down music trucks and things like that that um, that appear to have um, had permission to have those trucks on the road and things like that. So they're, they've been taking social distancing and they've had guidelines in place for bars and things like that. It's not supposed to be over 25 people at a time at a bar gatherings or anything like that over 25 people period but i did see footage this weekend where there was a party in shagaramas at a water park looked like a full-blown fet you know
but I don't know how that occurred. I don't know what, what transpired if the police ended up coming and shutting it down. I'm not sure. And I haven't really seen any footage from Tobago or how if Tobago, if they're having any parties and things like that in Tobago, I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna say that this virus is um, extremely contagious. Trimbagonians have been calling for the borders to be open and for the, not really the borders, but for the country to be opened up more fully. Because you like how the US have different phases where and different restrictions Trinidad still has a lot of restrictions um on the books in place even though they had no active cases and within the country over 80 days so people were getting very frustrated and a lot of people stopped wearing their mask and things like that because the risk and the fear wasn't really there so definitely now i think that people should be wearing masks and things like that out in public um, I would think twice about going on anybody's lime, anybody's barbecue, anybody's club, anybody's bar at this place in time because you know that there's quote unquote community spread. Even though they're not calling it community spread, you know that there is out there, you know? So you just gotta safeguard yourself. And as for the child that went to school um, because they have testing exams coming up, um, I feel it for the, for that family. I feel it for all those kids that's waiting on test results and things like that because it's a risk, you know, and the virus is extremely contagious. Um, also, with like with that case from the voice note, um, a lot of people were on the side of the guy should be arrested um, because he's tra he should be arrested because he knows that he has this virus. A lot of people have this virus and have no symptoms. So I can't really blame anyone for thinking that, I can't really blame him and I understand where the public is coming from and I think it's they're mainly coming from a standpoint of fear and not really looking at the bigger picture of how this virus is because the common cold still exists, okay? The common cold still exists. People still have allergies, Sahara dust, that's rampant. There's still other other factors like within, you know, every time somebody gets sick, they can't automatically think it's coronavirus. To just, there's a lesson for everybody to just know, learn more about how this virus operates and that people could have the virus and have no symptoms. So yes, the government is saying stay at home if you're sick, which is what the world is saying, stay home if you're sick, but that's easier said than done when there's other regular common cold and allergies and things like that going on you know and also like on the point of Trinidad and Tobago you have bills just like here too you have bills you know what I mean you have bills to pay so it's like it's kind of hard to tell somebody to stay home if they don't even think that that it's coronavirus you know so it's kind of like eye-opening from that standpoint I will say kudos to Trinidad and Tobago as far as from the earlies when the, this pandemic first started, a lot of businesses, restaurants, a lot of places put sinks in place in front of their business places and required people to wash their hands before entering their establishment. I've yet to see that here like that in the US, but at least in South Florida, I'm not seeing it. I don't know about any other states. Places in Trinidad and Tobago are also doing temperature checks before you enter businesses and establishments. So that's also a plus on their end. But as far as like your Walmart, your Target, and your hardware, your Home Depot and stuff, they're not doing that. So kudos to Trinidad and Tobago for doing that. But it's still not something that should be taken as the end all be all that this person is not sick. Because you could definitely have this virus, had a fever two days ago and have no fever now, but you're still contagious. I really think wearing a mask is one of the most important things that you can do and if you're going somewhere, I know the beaches in Trinidad and stuff is still open. If you're liming, try to stick with people that live in your household and not and try not to mingle too much. But I just hope that the country is truly prepared. But like as I will always say, you have to protect yourself. You can't expect your government to protect you in certain instances. We have to be smart as well and try to stay away from different environments and different things. And the potential for this virus to continue spreading is definitely there. So we have to safeguard ourselves and our families and also take it serious. I hope that every the numbers decrease. I hope that everybody that tested positive within this last week Hopefully everybody makes a full recovery and there's no life lost because this is a serious virus. And I hope that the numbers go down. But I think a key point is to secure that border on the water with the Coast Guard 
and kind of stop that influx of Venezuelans or people from South America coming into Trinidad and Tobago, you know, because that's a big problem because, yes, they're coming in. We know illegal immigration occurs all over the world. It's not, it's not something that's isolated. It happens. But, and people um, live places illegally and things like that for many different reasons. And we all know the situation in Venezuela right now. But I will say that those people coming in and not being tested is a definite gateway for this virus to come in and to continue spreading. The way how you patrol neighborhoods online, you need to patrol that water. And I'm not saying, and maybe if they need assistance, I don't know, you know, because they hasn't, I haven't seen any media talks on it. But if they need, like, volunteers from other islands, Coast Guards from other islands, other countries to come in and help patrol, then so be it. But it needs to be clapped down on, at least as a deterrent and not as easy for people to come in. But that's just my little take on everything. Um, guys, even if you're not in Trinidad, you're in the US, UK, wherever you're watching my video from, this is a pandemic, it's global. I cannot expect Trinidad and Tobago to be exempt from a global pandemic. It's just a fact, you know? Just wherever you are, just continue to stay safe social distance, wear your mask, wash your hands, just safeguard yourself and your families. Just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Feel my love unfolding like a laughing flame. All who did not know me when I done, they gonna know.